Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Boris TV tutorial and as you can see in front of you, I've created a pretty stylized particle animation that most people would think was created inside of Adobe's After Effects. Well, would you believe me if I told you that I created this complex animation without having to leave the comfort of my Avid Symphony non-linear editing application? Well, it's true and the animation took only minutes to create with a simple title, the fantastic particle emitter plugin, and a little bit of creativity. Let me show you how simple it was to make. Let's quit out of QuickTime and let's Alt tab into Avid's Symphony. And the first thing that we are going to need is a title. So I'm just gonna navigate up to Clip. I'll come down to New Title. And I'll be prompted now as to which title tool I wanna to use. I'm just gonna use the standard title tool. And let's just type out here, Boxing in big bold letters. And I think I'm just gonna use the Boris font here, which is Denmark. Very nice. And we'll just bump this up to be I don't know, maybe about 150. I think that's probably about good. Let's just see how big that gets us here. We want to stretch across a good part of the screen. I think that's pretty good. Maybe in a little bit bigger here, 175. Very cool. Okay, so what I want to do, because I wanted to create that very cool, uh, almost like a stroke type of effect with the particles, I need to create an element inside the title tool that has a stroke, because basically, what the effect is going to do is it's going to look at the alpha information of the title to put the particles around the edging of the text. So what I'm going to do with the text like such is I'm just going to navigate right down here and I'm going to create a new color for my border. And I think I'll just pick red. Now you're going to notice as soon as I do that, nothing happens. It's because I haven't actually applied the border yet. So let's just do that. I'm just going to apply a relatively thin border just like that. And what I'm going to do now is get rid of the fill. And to do that is actually very easy. I'm just going to navigate right over here and we'll just set its transparency to be 100% see-through, just like that. Now, really, the color is irrelevant. This could be red. It could be, you know, green, black, doesn't matter. Because remember, it's the alpha information that the effect is going to be looking at. So what we're going to do is we're just going to save this title out. I'll just simply say save. We'll call it appropriately enough, boxing. I'll just say save. We'll just save it into the particle emitter bin here. What I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to open some stock footage to stick in our timeline. And it doesn't even really matter which shot it is. That's not too bad. I'll just simply hit B on the keyboard on both Mac and Windows. We'll drop that into the particle emitter bin. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to create a new layer. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that when we apply particle emitter, it doesn't matter what we apply it to. As soon as we apply it to that layer, it's immediately going to make the layer transparent. Let me show you what I mean. I'm just going to come up. We'll just grab this clip here. I'm just going to drop it right onto video layer two. I'm just going to hit control and eight on Windows, command and eight on the Mac to call up the effects palette. Let's come down to particles. I'm just going to grab particle emitter 3D. You'll see as soon as I grab it, drag it over here, drop it right onto this shot. The shot immediately disappears and there's our particles. So really what I could do if I wanted to is just remove that altogether. I could actually take particle emitter 3D and just apply it to just this track. And guess what? I get the exact same effect. But in this case, we want to do something very specific. We want to have those particles coming out of the edge of the text. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to remove that. And I'm going to come back here. I'm just going to close my stock footage here. And I'll just close the effects palette because I don't need it right now. And let's take our title here with our stroke outline. And I'm going to take it and I'm going to drop it onto my shot. Now you'll see that we do have the word boxing stroked out here, just like we created it in the title tool. And what I'm going to do, we'll just hop back into the effects palette here, control and eight on Windows, command and eight on the Mac. I'm going to take the particle emitter 3D effect. I'm going to drag it right down here and I'm going to drop it onto this shot. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to see now what happens is I now have boxing over top of black. Now, what is going on? Because what should have happened is this layer should have disappeared and I should see through it to the layer below it. Well, what's actually happening here is because I had the effect on, what's happened is, is that particle emitter has been applied to that top layer. And what you're actually seeing in here is the fill information. And let me just step into this here for one second. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I'm just going to step in here and you'll see there is the alpha information. This is where the actual effect is applied to. So what's happening is I'm seeing through to the next layer below it, which is the fill layer. Now, how we get around that and how we see through this to the background is very simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode. Shift and Y is my shortcut. Obviously, if you don't have it mapped as a shortcut, you can find effects mode right here. 
or you can find it right over here. It's actually hidden behind the effects editor right there. There you go. And the first thing we're going to do inside of the effects editor is we're going to come right over here to the title mat and I'm going to say apply this to the title mat. Now as soon as I do, you're going to see it completely disappear. So we're now we're on our way to creating this cool look. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to want to tell the effect that we're going to want to look at the alpha information on this element to create our cool particle look. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate down to the emitter section. I'm just going to twirl that down here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to crank the birth rate of these particles up because I want to show you as soon as we switch over to tell the effect that we want to look at that alpha information, you're going to see everything snap into place. So let's set the birth rate to be something huge. Let's set it to be about something, oh, I don't know, about 2000. So there's going to be a ton of particles on the screen. What we're going to do is just scroll down here and we're going to come down to the emitter shape. What we're going to do is we're going to switch that shape from point to layer map. Now the next thing the effect wants to know, you'll see everything disappeared over here inside of our sequence window. And the reason is because right now we haven't told it what layer we actually want it to look at. And I'm going to tell it that I want it to look at the filter layer. And what I also want to do is I want to use the alpha information. Now we still got a whole big mess of things going on in here, but don't worry. Everything's going to clear itself up in one second. What I'm going to do before we clear everything up is I'm just going to set the particle type that we're going to want to see just so that when I snap it in there, you're going to see everything look pretty much the way that it should. Now what we're going to do is we're going to leave the particle shape as an image collection and I'm just going to choose in here a very cool one which is sparkle four point flare ring. Very nice. What we're also going to do is we're going to set the size randomness to be 100 and we're going to set the opacity randomness as well to be 100. Very nice. It's almost like a star field that we have going on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate right back up here to the emitter section and the reason that everything is still very scattered out is because the particle speed is set very high. We want the particle speed to be set very, very, very low. And when I say very low, I mean very low. I'm talking about a particle speed of about two, all the way down from 100. So I'm just gonna put in two and I want you to watch what happens as soon as I hit enter. Look at that. We now have boxing spelt out with particles. What I'm going to do is just scroll down a little bit. There's a couple other things that I want to set in here before we move on. First thing I want to do is I want to set the direction not to be random. I want that to be forward. What I also want to do is I want to come down here to the acceleration type and I want that to be explosive. Very cool. What we're also going to do is just increase the size of this a bit. Let me just turn on my title save here. There we go. Very nice. And let's just scroll down. I'm just going to increase the master size to be somewhere about 150 I think. There we go, very nice. Now, last thing I want to do is I want to change the color of this because, you know, as, as exciting as white is, it's not that exciting. So what I'm going to do is I'll just pick a color like, oh, I don't know, maybe sort of this aqua blue color. I'm going to say OK, and, you know, it's still quite not there. You remember in the intro, we sort of had this very cool, almost sort of gleaming look to it, but it doesn't really look like that. It looks very flat right now. Well, there's one last thing I have to do to give it that gleaming look. And what I want to do is I want to come down and I want to adjust the blend mode to be add. And as soon as I do, there's that very cool gleaming look that we had in the introduction. Very nice. Now you'll see also if I come back right at the beginning, this is obviously going to animate itself on because right at the very start, you know, the birth rate was set very high, but nothing has really been born until frame one. So you'll see as soon as I step into frame one, frame two, everything starts to appear. Everything's being born. Now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to animate this a little bit. So let's do that. The first thing I'm going to do is just come all the way back to the beginning here and let's come back to the effects editor and I'm going to come back to that scale parameter I just set. Let's take a look at all of the keyframe parameters in here because we want to get in and just animate certain parameters. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set a keyframe for master scale here. I'll just add a keyframe. We'll just come all the way down to the end here and we'll add another keyframe. And I think what we're going to do is we'll just increase the size of this to be about, I don't know, 165. Nothing too much. Just going to be a very slow move. Now what we want to do is we want to have this explode out towards the screen. So let's come to about, oh, I don't know, maybe about here. And what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the particle speed. Let's come all the way back up here. There we go. There's our particle speed set to a lowly little two. I'm just going to right click and add a keyframe. We'll just come down to maybe about, oh, I don't know, maybe about there. And let's set the particle speed now to be, oh, I don't know, maybe we'll put it back up at about 100 here. Everything's exploded up. Maybe a bit more. Maybe we'll do it at about 200. Sure, why not? Okay, so now what happens is 
boxing slowly growing. Once it gets to this point, it explodes out towards the screen. The only problem is, is that nothing ever really leaves. It all just kind of sits there and doesn't really, you know, die as, as sort of the expression goes. Because remember, the particles are born, and at some point we're going to want them to die or disappear as well. So what I'm going to do is right about, I think, here, we're going to come back into the effects editor, and for birth rate, I'm going to set a keyframe. And what I'm going to do is move ahead one frame, and I'm going to set another keyframe. And what I'm going to do is in that one frame, I'm going to go from a birth rate of 2,000 to a birth rate of nothing. Now, as soon as I set zero as the birth rate, remember, all these particles that are on the screen are still alive, but no new ones are going to be born. So the ones that are on the screen now are eventually going to dissipate and disappear. So you'll see now if I scroll through, they're just going to disappear just like such. Very cool. What I also want to do is just change the color of this as the explosion happens. So let's come all the way down here and I'll just set a keyframe for color. We'll just jump down a bit further here to about here. Again, we'll just set another keyframe here. Add keyframe and let's just step in. And I think maybe I'll pick sort of a purple color. Why not here? That's kind of a nice color. And now you're going to see what happens is, is that the particles go from this blue and as they start to explode out, they turn purple and then disappear. And now what I can do is simply come back. I can render this element out. And once the render is done, I'll play this back for you. But what you're going to see is that basically we created a very complex particle effect without having to leave the comfort of our nonlinear editing application, all done with the power of Bohr's Continuum Complete 8's Particle Emitter 3D. And our render's done. Remember, this is HD footage. That was a pretty quick render. So let's just come back to the beginning and hit play. Very nice. You can see them sparkle. Here comes the explosion. Boom, there they go. So I hope this tutorial has shown you that, you know, getting in and using a cool effect like particles doesn't need to be something that's restricted to getting into After Effects and doing. And you'll see that with a little bit of forward thought inside of the title tool, by creating a title that has an outline to it, you can create a very, very cool and very stylish looking particle effect, really, in no time flat. So if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to support at borisfx.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.